Oh, all right, well, the weather outside do be frightful. And we got us a little bit of a white marshmallow land Christmas. <laughs> oh, I'll take it. Although it's only an inch or two. But uh, the big thing is the, the weather out there. I think it's like minus two degrees. Woo! So we're hunkering on down. We got no reason to be outside. We are loving life here, celebrating the holidays. It's that time of year. Loving every minute of it. Hope you guys are too. All right, we're back here at the Warriors of God game. 100 years of war. And we're up to uh, 1400s. 1400s, 1411 to 1420. Started in, uh, let me see, 100 years of war at 1337. So we're going on up here. We are at the, uh, what phase are we at here? Oh, uh, we are at the, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, initiative phase. Get the roll for the initiative, and we got three turns left. Hey, hold on a second. All right, we're we're recovered. We're good to go. All right, let's see here. We will roll for the uh, English player first. And let's see. No king is in there. Uh, is in their spot. We gotta take off the disgraced markers here first. All is forgiven. So there we go. Disgraced markers gone. Uh, aggressor markers gone. We should be up to date. Like I said, no king in their spot. In their home country, no king killed. Oh, players, no king. Yeah, we both have kings, so there won't be no negative penalty on the die roll. English player. Roll for initiative. Two. French answer with a two. So that means the uh, English player will keep the initiative. We'll add two to this, which will be four. And we'll get one less, so there won't be too many impulses going on this turn. All right. Next is the conduct actions for their impulses. This could be key. Like I said, the French got a one victory point lead. Uh, let's see what the English want to do with their first move. Be right back. Well, I think it's time to get old Henry with his longbowman in there. I want to make a little note. There was a uh, battle last time in the last episode uh, where I had a choice between, and this is a good example here, of picking this number with Henry a six or a four, and for some mistake, I went with a six. And it should have only been a four. You always pick the lesser of the number. I did realize that after I watched the video. But, uh, so, I think in that one battle, he should have rolled with one less dice or something like that. But uh, it is what it is. Uh, we did make that mistake. Uh, only mistake in the whole game. So, it ain't too bad. And I didn't get a chance to use that catch it. But, uh, yeah, it was a choice between adding the number of troops he has or the lesser number. But then they always get this bonus over and above. And he picked the lesser one, and the four would have been the lesser, and I went with the six for some reason. So I think I did that wrong. But anyway, our first move, we're going to get old Henry across the border. And he'll just uh, stay by himself for right now and leave somebody in there at Picari, although I don't think they're going to be doing anything. We'll move two leaders. We'll go ahead and move two leaders into Picari. Well, now you want to keep that six. Henry, I think, can do it all himself. So we put Henry in there across the legal border. Oh, sorry about that. Zoom feature out. And that will take care of the English impulse. French in response. French are uh, lacking in uh, leadership and leaders, so it's kind of a barren time. Who will be the leader to emerge for the French? <laughs> hint, hint. Be back. All right, old Charles is our man. We need to get him up there with that six uh, capacity, with those six die roll. Uh, unfortunately, he's... If it came between a six and a three, he'd only get a three. We need to get him up there with a bunch of men. So we move in him on up. That'll take care of the French. I don't know if we got enough impulses to get there. It looks like we will. But that'll take care of the French. Be back with the English. All right, I believe, well, let me see here. We got three impulses left. Who do I want to bring in there? Do I want to bring in the king? He's got a gun. Yeah, he's got the gunners in case they go back in there. Let me look and see. I do believe we will bring the English king across the river in the Isle of France. 
Oh, one thing I forgot to do when Henry moved in. He is the aggressor. I just made, just remembered that. So he'll be the aggressor. These both are locked in there now because they uh, are outnumbered by leaders. You need to have it. They can get one more leader in there and they can move freely. But other than that, they're locked in. The French leaders, uh, on the other hand, are able to move in and out. Plus, they got a marker there that counts as a leader. So, huh, I guess the English would need two more leaders to get in there. Maybe three, yeah. Oh, two more. Yep, you need two more leaders. Be able to move around. That will take care of the English turn. And another thought was to bring him across and on in and just leave my king here, but the king's got the he's got the guns for the fortress walls. Alright, so the French will answer back by moving this leader here on up. And the Anjou. It'll take care of the French move. For now what the English want to do, we'll be right back. Alright, what's our one of our moves? Uh, what do we want to do? We want to get rid of the threat to England. But how, where, and why? The easier target would be Brittany. Got a stronger leader up there in Scotland. He outranks us. Well, he don't outrank us, but he outbraves us. So therefore, we will move... All free. Well, let's go ahead and, uh, first of all, we'll move old John of Lancaster. Oh, we'll move John of Lancaster into England for our, one of our moves, just to make sure nobody gets goofy and stupid moving into unoccupied England. So that'll take care of that move there. And uh, now for French. French got one last impulse. Uh, I guess it's a no-brainer. We want to get old Charles up here in the Isle de France. We'll, we'll, we'll sort it all out when it comes time for the battle. But he's in the Isle de France. That takes care of our last impulse. With the English last impulse, we're going to move our leader with all the longbowmen out there. Now, we wouldn't go for Scotland, but his leader's got more bravery. He'd get a one uh, difference, a better die roll. Not as many dice. Maybe. You have to look and see, but we're going here. We're going here. That'll take care of all the impulses. All right. Now, when we went there, we are the aggressor. Put the aggressor marker on there. Aggressor marker there it means that we've got two battles to resolve. When we come back, we're going to take care of the battles. Does the French or does the English have enough assets? There's old Henry. Not a thing of it is. Between Henry and the king, they both got the same rank. So I'll be given the command keys. To old Henry V. He's a better. He, we'll see what the what the French can answer with. We do have Charles there. I guess he's going to have to be the leader. He outranks them all, so but he can roll either six or whatever the lesson is. Well, anyway, we'll figure it out here pretty soon. It'll be interesting to see the dies, uh, number of die rolls. Interesting battle coming on up. I'll be right back. All right then, ready for the battle. Old Henry moved in first. Making him the aggressor. And then the English king. Another Henry. We got both Henrys. <laughs> Henry the fourth and Henry the fifth. Alright, well there you go. It's all in the family there. Uh, they are moving in. It's all about now. The story has uh, shifted to the effectiveness of the English longbowmen. They are take, kicking ass and taking names. The French king knowing his... Uh, limitations and knowing that he would be a liability in battle that's staying off in a way but uh, other than that there's a key battle of the game coming up right here French are in the lead 5-1 Ooh, victory point all right Put the, bring the battle down to the arena we'll see what's up all right then here's the battle oh Charles the seventh will be leading his troops and uh, we gotta figure out how many dice he will roll. What is less? A six or a one, two, three, nine, twelve, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Six is less. So that's why I brought him in there. He can roll six dice. I wanna get that maximum dice that's going on here. All right, there you go. He's in charge. Now, what is less? Six or. 9, 10, 11, 12. 6 will be less, so he's starting out with 6. Oh, 4, 5, 
works. All right, he gets to add long bowman now. All right, now which would be less. Huh. The five would be less. But I don't know if he adds this one over and above two. Oh, let me check this out. Be right back. All right, well, unfortunately, I brought old freaking Henry IV in. So you got to figure out which is letter, lesser. His longbow rating here or this. So he's, this will be lesser. So he can add one to his die. If, if, uh, if I thought about that too. If the king wouldn't have been there, he would have added six. Because there would have been no other longbowmen. So I'm losing a, I'm losing a die. I'm, I'm losing more than that. Phew. Losing five more die. So ugh, whatever. I thought about that too, bringing him in. But the other reason we had to bring him in, I'm realizing this right now, is looking at this as the gunners in case the French do go behind the walls here at Isle de France. All right, so now, knowing that, uh, what are we doing here? We are also, the English, gaining a one on the die roll, so they'll be hitting with fives and sixes because Charles has only got a one rating bravery where he has a two, so the difference is a plus one. That is a bummer on that. So I'm thinking it's time to get behind the walls. So we have to look at the siege number. French, go behind the walls again. See if they could, see if they could do it again. They did it last turn. They uh, repelled them. We'll see if we can do it again. Be right back. Right then, all those dice are gone. We were just looking for the siege number. The area number is a three. So we get that to start with. Oh, we'll add another three, making that a six on our dice abacus. Because I was absent today, they taught math. Uh, adding the bravery of the besieged battle's commander. That's only a one. So that'll make that a seven. All right. So that is the French siege number. The English counter with the bravery rating of the besiegers. So that's a two. We'll minus two from that. Minus one. Minus. Oh, what do we got? Two. All right. And then subtracting the number of gunner troop strength points. And that's two. So now we got that down to three. Ooh. So we got to roll. Uh. That roll is greater than the siege number, so greater than three. And this is a key roll here, greater than three, for out of the France and maybe the game. He gets a two. <laughs> oh, the French hold them off again. Oh, that is tough luck. All right. Uh, now what will happen is I can split these uh, leaders up. I have to see if I want them both to go to Norman. I think I'm going to have one of them go to Angie like I did last time. Uh, well, let me see. What do we need to do here? I believe the French king will retreat to Anjou. With all of his gunners and everything. That'll give us a good roll on Anjou. You can't retreat. Uh, hold on a second. Make sure I'm getting this on camera. You can't, uh, He's retreating from Isle de France over across that legal border. You can't go anywhere where there's another general, so kind of limits it in a way, but I want to roll for that Angie. We'll just roll for it, maybe see if we can get it. Meanwhile, old Henry will go back to Normandy. There you go. Aggressive marker. We pray, place the replace the French, and we'll be right back. All right, then French hold out. Uh, English channel split up. Henry went back to Normandy, and his uh, cousin, or brother, went over here to. Oh, what is that again? Anjou. I'm trying to claim that as a territory. We have one more battle that takes place. That's over here in Brittany. And we'll be right back with the combatants. All right, then, here we go. We got Humphrey of Lancaster. And he has got a bunch of longbowmen, even some Welsh longbowmen, versus. Uh, oh, John D. Mungley. Huh, Mungley. Huh. All right, he only has three troops with him, uh, which is less. Three or four. Three is less, so he's got to roll like three dice. Ouch. Which is less? Four, 
five. Well, it'd be three or four or four. Oh, that's right. He can grow four. Yeah, let's count this as, a, as a, an individual. So it's three, four, or four. He can roll four. It's tied four, four. What's well, last five? Or one, two, three. Well, no, four, five, six, seven. Four, five, six, seven, or five. What's the last set? Five is the last. Two, three, four, five. All right. Now, which is last? That number five or the number of long bowmen he has here? He has two long bowmen on here, so two would be less. If we get an extra two, so he is rolling six, seven dice. Make sure we did this right. Which is last? Three or four? Three plus one is four, or four, and that's four. So he always gets the four. So there you go. This is it. All right. They're both got the same number, so they're both hitting on sixes. We will. He is the aggressor, so he has to get a hit with his uh, die rolls. There is no fortifications in Brittany yet. So, English roll on first, looking for sixes. Oh, he gets three hits. Oh, takes him out. Put the casualties over here. I think it's simultaneous. So he gets rows four. He gets rows four. Get this out of here. He got a hit, so we don't have to worry about a missed marker. Wrench roll and respond. No hits yet. Still no hits. All right. Now what does the French want to do? We retreat. We have to, uh, well, we're going down fighting on this one. We're not retreating, so we're rolling again. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dice. Looking for six. One hit. That'll do it. That'll take care of the general. He gets to roll his four. Uh, let me see here. No good. Goes down without a fight. Old Jean de Mungali. All right, then we'll roll on the elim elimination die roll chart. Now we get to add, I think. Yeah, we add a one. There you go. There you go. It's down at the bottom there. We add a one because he's got a one star. Let's see what happens. What his fate is. Five, a six. On a chart here, a six equals captured. So he will join his buddy. Henry Percy. Henry and Percy was a good general I have in there. He's almost worth getting out. But there you go. They have two of them in there now. All right. So the English have prevailed and have captured. It's a pretty nice little army. Old uh, Humphrey of Lancaster has. Oh, can't do this one hand. We'll be right back. All right. That takes care of the combat phase. We will move on to phase four but determine the control of areas. But first we remove all con aggressive markers from the map. So we have, uh, did we remove them already? I guess we did. I don't see anything there, so I must have already did that, which is fine. Oh, no, there you go. One aggressive marker there. There should have been another one over here, but I guess I don't know All right, so now I'm determined control of areas. Huh. Oh, let me see, let me see, let me see. The only place where we got troops with no controls is right here for the English. So the English king will attempt to take control of Anjou. He needs a three. Uh, at least three or more, three or less. Let me see what's going on here with that. Making a mess here. Gotta do some housekeeping. Be right cat back. It's his rank or less. So we're looking for a three or less for control of Anjou. Doesn't get it. Next is Humphrey. Going for Brittany. Two or less. Can use those points. Nope. Don't get it. Don't get it. Uh, let's go over here. I see one. Henry and Buford going to Picardy. Being the two or less. No good. I did not see any spots where there are leaders without control markers. That would be it. Oh. Yep. Yep, 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 that is it. Alrighty then. 
we will move on to the uh, race troops place mercenaries be right back this is the before all right this will be the after you can see here the number of troops raised equal to the rating of the area now you will notice on one spot here that we have brought in our first night of the game and that is only because we have a leader here that is natural and there's a three star and it can uh, control him. Now the only thing with the knight is he can he can take two hits. But if he takes one hit, he's eliminated. But I don't want we'll to look that up when it comes. But uh, there's a English response. We did bring in our longbowmen that we had with us. But a uh, bunch of troops without leaders but that will come in with, I believe, the next phase, which is... Uh, Deploy troops and recruit mercenaries. So deploying troops is moving them between controlled areas, but they got to be next to adjacent controlled areas, like from here to here. There's no spot here, so you can't move them across the English Channel. You need to control this spot, which you don't. So I can move this way. I can move them this way or this way. Either or. Let me look around see if you want to do any deploying. We'll be right back. All right. I think Charles could use some more troops. Yeah, we need to do that. We're going to go ahead and deploy this troop to here. These two troops here up here into Isle de France. So there'll be four troops. Let me get a changer on here. Yeah, so this will be the total in Isle de France right now due to deployment. Move them around. Uh, let me see if the uh, English were doing any. Deploying of troops or recruiting of mercenaries. Be back back. Uh, I think the troops are going to stay on put for the English. There will be no deployment. No moving troops around. Uh, put these on back here. This one back here. Keep everything nice and straight. You know how these wargaming tables can be. <laughs> it takes us one slip. And I can just imagine. You watch uh, Alexander at his house. You can usually hear his family or his children upstairs <laughs> carry it on. Just imagine, oh god, I can imagine. He's probably lost a few a few tables that way. Alright, we are done with the deployment phase. We'll go down here to the uh oh wrong one. Wrong one again. There you go. Uh deploy troops. Deposed of captured leaders. Wow. Let's see what goes on there. We'll be right back. All right, well, per rules, it says we have any uh, leaders that are in your captured spot that have the same uh, rank. you got to automatically exchange them, so we'll do that. And therefore, putting these leaders in what's called the routed the leader box. That is up here. For the English and for the French. Oh, yeah, that's all right. There you go. We have just exchanged prisoners. It's mandatory, it says. All right. Uh, I've only blah, 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 if it's possible, not the number of captured. If there are different possibilities for an even exchange, then the initial player to decides which leaders are exchanged. Yeah, now we're good. Oh, nobody else to exchange in there. He is in now. I'd like to get him back, but I don't have an area I really want to give up. What's Orleans? It's rated a one. Uh, hold on a second. Huh. Rated a one. Henry's not bad. We'll be rolling for his death though pretty soon. Uh, what's a sixth leader got to roll nowadays? One to four? Ouch. For a six rated leader? One to three. On a death, next uh, death check, is it worth giving him up? He's a good leader. Definitely the bravest leader we got. Yeah, I know we might lose him right away. No, well, we'll leave him in there. Sorry. But he will be left to rot. <laughs> All right. Determined leader death. Now we find out we made the right decision. This so was a key uh, phase of the game. We'll be right back for the death check. All right. Time to see you. What toll the time 
his head on the leaders. We we're going up here to French King. It's like the first one to check. And uh, he's got a number five. Let's make sure we got this right here. Number five underneath where we are at is a one to four. So one to four in his history. Pretty good chance. Yep, he is gone. French King is no more. We'll take the king marker. Put it down here. French have no king. He has a number 11 on the back. So see you, a new general will arrive on turn number 11. All right. Next French leader, Charles, with a 7 rating. Looking down here on a 7 with this turn. Uh, you want a 2. Gets old Charles. Charles makes it with a 5. Oh, here we go. Another 7 leader. Jean. 1 or 2 for Jean. Three, Jean makes it narrowly. All right, a two for Charles. Oh, old Charles is getting old. How did you survive so long, Charles? So with a two, come on over here. Ah, oh, Charles, you ain't gonna make it. Charles is done. He should have been done last turn, huh? All right, Charles is history. Where you at, Charles? Yep, Charles is gone. No chance to live that long for the two. Flip him over. He comes back on turn eight. Oh, he should have came back last turn. Well, how does that work out? We might have messed up. All right, we'll put him over here, I guess. Yep, we should have took Charles off. How did he survive the last one? Don't know. He should have come back last turn, so we'll put him on there this turn, I guess. He's a nice little, well, he's a leader. So that could have came in handy. Well, we got two mess ups on this game, and game integrity is a little bit compromised. If you know me, we like to do it by the book. That is a big hurt. Okay, here's another seven. And where are we looking at those so again? Seven is a one or two on turn nine. All right, let's see. All right, turn eight. Did I move that marker the wrong way? Let me see here. I think it is turn eight because when we do all these things here, it'll be adjust the score. And uh, let me see here. Place now. We'll place leaders. If it was turn eight, there would be no leaders to place. So yeah, we're good. We just messed up and forgot about them. All right. So next we're going for another Jean. Jean, or Jean, Jean, with a seven, one or two, one or two, one or two. A six, he's good, he's good. And last but not least, he's got an eight up there, which means he just came in. And he only needs a one. To bite the dust. Oh, no way. Oh, man, not good. Not living life good up there in Scotland. Oh, he was a merc. So he will be eliminated and down here in the eliminated mercenary pile. That'll take care of the uh, French. Did we miss one? Sure did. Looking for another one. <coughs> Unlucky French. Oh, he was. He's good. Alright, now we got good old Henry. He's in prison with a six. Go for a one to three. One to three. Five, he's good. So that'll take care of all the French. All right, yep, that's probably what happened. I don't know what happened up here. But old Charles gets to come on. Oh, he's an eight. Let me see, he came in on turn eight. Well, I guess we could roll for him. It's an eight. It's a one, so we'll roll for old Charles. Although he hasn't come on. Let's roll for him anyway. Roll for old Charles. Six, so Charles will be able to come on. We'll keep him. He'll come on next turn. That's the only thing we can do about that. All right. 
and it's a wonder that would be if that was the only mistake I made. So we'll take it. We'll take that. Uh, now for the English. The English will go with the Humphrey need no one. Well, need a need a taller cup. Ooh, I seen that one. All right, now for the English king. He's a six. He's needing a one or three. One or three for the English king. Oh, he's living healthy, wealthy, and wise. All right, seven. Seven to just needing a, a turn eight. Seven to needing a one or two. Yep, seven's one or twos. Oh, no good. No good. Thomas Lancaster. He'll come back on turn. Oh, I can't read that. Oh, he's done. All right. He comes back on turn one. That was the last one it has. All right. Next, another one. One or two for his cousin, Henry V. He was a really good general. Oh, yeah. He's, he's nice. Nice and safe. Another Henry the six one or three one or three three ouch Henry Buford is off but he was a mercenary general so he's done alright seven sevens are needing a one or two one or two three he's good alright next is an eight Need just a one, two, ooh, dodge the arrow, just dodge the arrow, whizzed by him. And last but not least, looking for a one for John of Lancaster. Don't want a one, John. All right, John's good. John is good. I think that's going to take care of all the leaders. Just made a big old mess here. This fell on the floor. <laughs> uh, that's just me if I had kids and crazy dogs who knows so we're definitely set up for uh, gameplay let's check out the ones in the dungeon too I forgot all about them or in the routed box we got one there with a 5 a 5 underneath this here 1 to 4 1 to 4 for the 5 general he makes it the next one it's a one to three for the six. And he makes it all right, draw good. That takes care of all the generals, or all the leaders, as they call them in this game. We'll be back to move on to the uh, place leaders phase. We'll be right back. All right, so this is the way it is. After the years gone by, leaderless troops abound. Unfortunately for the French, their hits keep on coming because they are leader to the list. Do they have a number three ranked leader on the board? No, they do not. So they will be leader less. Ouch. Big hit. French by the French. Mortality hit the French worse. It's time to place leaders for this next turn. And we will be going with, uh, we'll keep the game turn on nine because it's game turn nine now. And then we'll flip that over to ten coming on up, but we get an extra leader. And we forgot to place last time, but he survived. He survived a mortality check. All right, let me take a look at these leaders. We'll be right back. All right, our six leaders come on each turn. Two for the English. You can see uh, John Talbot got himself some good longbowmen. Although Thomas Montacute, not bad with that number five on the right. Here are our choices of mercenaries. Philippe, probably the better of the two. With his five dies, he can bring with him to a battle compared to three. They're both got a bravery of one. Now over here, though, here we come. This could be a answer to the French prayers. Joan of Arc comes in now, although her bravery is only one. But she can fight pretty good with that seven uh, die. We'll look and see what other kind of special abilities she might have. Jean de Donois. Uh, well, 
four, not really nothing to speak of. Charles the uh, seventh, though, wasn't too bad. He could have come on last turn, so that was, and he will be the new king with that three rating. So there you go. Oh, let's look under here, and we will check out the. Oh, Joan of Arc. Let's get rid of that light. Joan of Arc is a French battle commander. The English player must roll a die before each battle round. The die roll is equal to the English battle commander's battery running. Battle is conducted normally for this battle round. If the die roll is not greater than the English battle commander's bravery rating, the English player will not roll any battle dice in this battle round and will likely get trounced by a girl. If the die roll is less than the English battle commander's bravery rating, Joan of Arc is indisposed for a while. The French player will not roll any battle dice in this battle round. Whoa, what? Be right back. All right, so if Joan of Arc's a commander, you gotta roll equal for nothing to happen. If you roll more, and bet if you're more more than an English battle commander's rating, it's a plus for the French. If you roll less, it's a negative for the French. So, yeah, that could be a, a make or break with Joan of Arc as your leader. Uh, let me see here. The non and this two player, I think it's the choose. Let me see here. Oh, deploying troops. Place leaders, arriving internal leaders, place founder, pull this around, blah, 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 blah. The non-initiative player chooses, okay. There you go. So, I believe we will flip him over to the French color. Flipping him over to the English color. And there's our generals, or there's our leaders. All right. Leader placement. We will place leaders after we have determined leader death. Or replacement. Leader placement priorities. All right. We place some leaders first for the French and the English. Let's just let you see what the results are. Be right back. All right, then for the French, I put old uh, Jean de Donos, not in his home area, been uh, Aquitaine because it's a controlled area and it's a number three, so it's a valuable area, and he'll take up those three troops. We also put oh zoom feature. Uh, Felipe, uh, that five never comes in handy, but he's got some troops there up in Scotland we want to fill him up with, so we put him up there. And last but not least, old Joan of Arc, we put down here with a, a bunch of troops. She could hold six. There's three, four, five, six there, and there's gunners. She can lead an army by herself, and she gets some good benefits, so we'll put her there. That will be the three generals, or three leaders. Deployed for the French, three leaders for the English, coming up. Thomas Montacute to Normandy. Oh, he also gets a troop because he's from Normandy. Didn't even see that. So there you go. He gets to bring in a raise his local ones, which will, I don't know if that'll help or hurt. We're probably going to lose troops there. Giles to uh, England. And who else did I put? Oh my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Giles. Oh, there's one more we put that I'm not seeing. Let me check this out right back. Two nine leaders are in England, Giles and uh, Talbot. Talbot was able to bring one troop with them, but it had to be regular, can't be longbowmen. All right, that'll be it for the uh, routed, or uh, for the uh, leader placement. Let me look and see what we do about those ones in the router box. Oh, uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, let me check that out real quick. Be right back. All right, that is nine. We are on... Oh, we already opposed the leaderless troops. We're on ten, so our last one. We should have uh, it said in the same... Blah, blah, blah. In addition, leaders in this turn draw a leader box turn to play. Note that originally non-leaders in a rounded leader box might have switched sides. Huh. Check that out. I'll be right back. All right. Well, they're both aligned. It was just making note if they were not aligned. I'd have to. You get a chance to uh, each side to pick which leader they wanted to, so they could flip sides. Is all they're making note of here. But we we got two more leaders to place. 
Huh. All right, we got that. All right, for the French, I'm going to put him in his home spot and give him his uh, entourage or his local group of one. And he will go in Idle de France. Idle de France is pretty well packed with leaders. And I got to get some troops here. We'll, we'll be taking care of that in the next phase. Figure out what I want to do with the English leader. Be right back. The English leader is going to go into Wales and take that troop that's a controlled area without a leader and has one troop on it. Unfortunately, it's not his home area, so he won't be able to bring troops with him. Now we are caught up. All right. Now, okay, well, we're still on nine, so that was cool. Yeah, now we depose of leaderless troops, sir. Depose of leaderless troops. So we get to assign troops to leaders. Clean up this board and see who is left without a chair. These troops are all gathered. They got their equipment. They're ready to fight. The only problem is, might not be enough equipment or logistics and leaders to take care of them. We'll find out how that works out. We'll be right back. 